Hi book lovers! Welcome back to my channel, the historical romance readathon that I am co-hosting with two of my best friends, Lisa from Remarkably Lisa and Jessica from Peace Love Books, is coming this Friday. It's so close and I'm already so excited. I kind of started a little bit early. I started reading some historical romances already just so that I could have some kind of content to post during the readathon. But today I am going to show you guys my TBR for the week from January 15th through the 21st, as well as share my own own recs for you guys based on the little bingo card that we made for the readathon. I can't really do every single square on the bingo just because there are some that you kind of have to do yourself like a new to you author or a used book which by the way library copies do count for used books so if you don't want to buy anything that's the perfect option but for each of the rest of the squares I'm going to be sharing with you guys two recommendations, two historical romance recommendations. But first my TBR, I do have quite a big TBR. It is is quite ambitious. We'll see if I end up reading them all or if I even stick to it. First is of course A Notorious Vow by Joanna Shoup which is our group buddy read. This one counts for the Marriage of Convenience square as well as a Damaged Hero square. The hero is the heroine's reclusive neighbor and he is also deaf. This one I do believe is on KU on Kindle Unlimited but I did borrow the audiobook from my library so it can count for the used book square, the Joanna Shoup square. It has blue on the cover plus it has a ripped bodice and a shirtless guy on the cover. Another book on my TBR is Devil's Bride by Stephanie Lawrence. I have been buying a ton of Stephanie Lawrence books even though I've never read her before. I probably own around 20 or more books of hers, mostly the Sinster series and the Bastion Club series. I mainly got them for the beautiful step backs and back covers but since I own so many of them now I guess I should probably start reading her so this is my perfect excuse to finally try Stephanie Lawrence. She is going to be a new to me author. This is a used book. This is what the step back looks like. It's another marriage of convenience. It does have blue on the cover. It was published before 2000 in 1998. In this romance we have a rig hero who gets into a compromising position with the governess heroine. So he offers her a marriage of convenience and she doesn't want it. So I am really excited to see how this one plays out. Another old school kind of romance is Splendid by Julia Quinn. I really want to read one of Julia Quinn's older romances for this readathon. I'm settling with Splendid for this TBR but I might switch it up when the readathon starts. Splendid is actually Julia Quinn's very first published historical romance. It was published in 1995 so the before 2000 square and it does have some blue on the cover. I'm excited to read this and if you couldn't tell it does have a shirtless man on the cover. Here we have an American heiress heroine and a Duke hero who is very determined never to fall in love. I have two more old school historical romances that I want to read for the readathon. This one is Vivid by Beverly Jenkins. Look at this beautiful beautiful hardcover. It does have a shirtless man on the cover. This one counts for the pre-2000 square. It was published in 1995 and it is also a standalone. This one it sounds really great. The heroine is a female doctor, a black female doctor who is struggling to find work but does in this small town and she falls in love with the town's mayor. The last old school historical romance that I really really want to read is A Kingdom of Dreams by Judith Renaud. I am actually in the middle of one of the other books in this series Whitney My Love. So Judith McNaught is no longer a new to me author uh, but I am loving Whitney My Love so I'm excited to read this one. This one is technically book one in the Westmoreland series because it's more of a medieval set romance. It's like in the 1500s whereas Whitney My Love is your classic Regency historical romance. The hero in Whitney My Love is a descendant of this hero and they are both the Duke of Claymore but this one is a captive historical romance. The hero kidnaps the heroine away from her school, from her convent school. I'm loving Judith McNaught's writing and this one has a really beautiful step back as well. I'm not sure why but this one doesn't have a copyright page but it was published in 1989 so it is officially the oldest book on my TBR. For some more recent releases I have Her Wicked Marquis by Stacey Reed. This one I'm counting it for the recent release square because it was published in December 2020. I enjoyed book one of the series, the Sinful Wallflower series, and I literally just finished 
another Stacey Reed book, so I'm excited to read more of her. In this book, the heroine is trying to get out of this marriage with an old man. So when there is this scandal sheet that comes out about the hero climbing out of someone's bedroom, she claims that that bedroom is her bedroom so that she can ruin her reputation and not have to marry that old man. Now all she has to do is to get the hero to go along with that little ruse. This next one is a book that was recommended to me by Lisa, remarkably Lisa. It's Love is Blind by Lindsay Sands. This heroine is not actually blind, she just has really bad eyesight, which I can relate to. Lisa said it was a really cute romance, the heroine is very clumsy because of her poor eyesight and her stepmother is forcing her not to wear her glasses because it doesn't look good on her. So now she can't even see her potential suitors. I also want to read 50 Ways to Ruin a Rig by Jade Lee. Jade Lee is gonna be a new to me author. I have been wanting to read her for a while. I borrowed a copy from my library and this one sounds great. It's got the fake engagement trope. The heroine needs help with getting some more suitors and the hero is trying to get his grandfather off his back and fake this engagement. Again, I've never read Jay Lee, but hopefully I enjoy it. And this last one is another recommendation. We actually talked about it during our last historical romance readathon live show. All three of us, Lisa and Jessica, both read it and loved it, even though they completely forgot the title of the book. The heroine here is actually blind and she falls in love with a sea captain. This might be able to fit for the different social classes square. I'm not 100% sure, but I do love Elizabeth Hoy. I just haven't finished every single Made in Lane book. And this is what the adorable step back looks like. So that is my TBR for the readathon and now on to all of my recommendations. If you've been curious to see if any Bridgerton books fit into any of the squares, I will be including the ones that do fit. The first square is different social classes and I do have a Bridgerton book that does fit, which is an offer from a gentleman, book three, in the series. This is the original edition. This is the newer edition. So if you do have the new edition, it does count for the blue on the cover square. This romance is a Cinderella retelling. The hero is Benedict, the second oldest of the Bridgertons. Benedict is from a wealthy and powerful family, whereas Sophie, the heroine, is a bastard of an earl. She's a bastard daughter, but she has pretty much become a servant to her step family. She is very much working class, whereas Benedict is not, and that is kind of a point of contention tension between the two. Another historical romance that has characters from two different social classes is Bringing Down the Duke by Evie Dunmore. I love this book. It was a fantastic debut from Evie Dunmore. We have a Duke hero and a heroine who is on scholarship at Oxford. She is not wealthy and she is not titled, which means the hero has a hard time trying to get her to marry him. As a Duke, he has a duty to marry into another powerful family and the heroine's is not. For the Marriage of Convenience Square, I have have Tempest by Beverly Jenkins. This is actually a mail order bride kind of romance. The single father hero who is also the town's doctor, he needs a bride and the heroine signs up for it. And during their very first meeting, she actually ends up shooting him because she thinks he's like a highwayman. It's great. It was my first Beverly Jenkins book and I really enjoyed it. Plus it's got blue on the cover. The other Marriage of Convenience book is Never Seduces Scott by Maya Banks. This is a medieval Scottish historical romance we have a marriage of convenience between two rival Scottish clans. The heroine is deaf and I think people also believe that she's mute but she's not. And the hero is a rugged Scottish warrior. For the damaged hero square, the one that usually comes to mind for me for a recent release, it was published in 2020, is My Darling Duke by Stacey Reed. This is book one in the Sinful Wallflower series. I'm planning on reading book two for my TBR. The hero here is very much a damaged hero. He is a reclusive duke. The heroine pretends to be his fiance so that she can elevate her family and her sisters. She thinks he'll never find out, but of course he does. The hero is broody and scarred and has a tortured past. This romance is pretty slow burn, but I did really enjoy it. And the other damaged hero book that I'm recommending is a Bridgerton book, and that is book five, To Sir Philip with Love. The hero is tortured over his late wife who actually tried to commit suicide. He is now a single father of two children and he has no idea what to do with them. His heroine is Eloise and they made the perfect Sunshine and Grump duo. For the Joanna Shoup Square, I'm recommending the first two books in the Uptown Girl series. The Rogue of Fifth Avenue is book one, The Prince of Broadway is book two. Both of them, well, all the books in the series probably count for the different social classes square. The heroines who are sisters, they come from a very respectable family and the heroes are very much not that respectable. Book one has a heroine trying to play Robin Hood and a hero who's trying to get her out of trouble. And book two, the heroine is trying to learn how to run a 
casino because she wants to open her own. So she learns from the very best, the powerful casino owner hero, who is also trying to get revenge against her father. For blue on the cover, I have Sea of Ruin by Pam Godwin, which also counts for the Inby published square. And it is a standalone. It's a dark, erotic, historical romance all about pirates. And the other blue on the cover book is Flowers from the Storm by Laura Kinsale. This one also counts for a standalone. It was published before 2000 in 1992. It is a standalone and it's got a marriage of convenience and a damaged hero. I'll be talking about this one a lot more next week, but it was such a fascinating read. I really, really enjoyed it. The hero here gets like a stroke and he loses part of his brain function and the heroine becomes his nurse. For the published before 2000 square, I have two of my all-time favorite historical romances. The first one is Lord of Scoundrels by Loretta Chase. This one counts for the damaged hero and marriage of convenience squares. And if you have the new cover, it does have blue. This is what the beautiful step back looks like. This book was published in 1994. This one is an enemies to lovers romance and it's got the best banter that I've ever read. I highly, highly recommend you read this if you haven't already. And my other favorite book that I feel like I've talked about so much last year is Indigo by Beverly Jenkins. It's got blue on the cover of this original edition as well as the new one, I believe. Indigo was published in 1996. It is set pre-Civil War and the main characters both help slaves escape to the North. It's the kind of historical romance where one of the main characters gets sick or injured, the hero here gets injured, and then the heroine helps to take care of him. For some recent releases, these two were published in 2020. This one is Her Night with the Duke by Diana Quincy. It is a forbidden historical romance and it's also got a widowed heroine. The widowed heroine here falls in love with her stuff daughters intended, who she actually had a one night stand with before the whole engagement was announced. And the other recent release was one of my favorites last year. It is All Scott and Bothered by Kerrigan Byrne. This one also counts for the blue on the cover square. It's got a curvy heroine and a giant Scottish hero who just worships her. But before he gets to that part, she actually inherits a gambling establishment and he, since he's like a Lord Chief Justice, is trying to investigate her. For some standalones, I have Delicious by Sherry Thomas. The main characters shared this one night together and the hero was ready to offer her marriage but instead she ran away. She's now like a famous chef and he is this rising political star. She is hired as the new chef at his household but she hides her face away from him so that he can't recognize who she is. It is such an angsty romance and I do believe this counts for the different social classes square as well. The other standalone is one of my favorites from Lisa Kleypas. Such an underrated romance. It is Stranger in My Arms with this beautiful step back with a shirtless man. It was published before 2000 in 1998 and the heroine is widowed except she's not anymore because her supposedly dead husband comes back to life. She didn't have a good relationship with her husband back then but now that he's back he is very different. He is very alpha, very attentive to her, very seductive so she's wondering if it's really him or not. For some indie published historical romances I have a wicked kind of husband by Mia Vinci. In this one, the main characters are married. They had a marriage of convenience, but they haven't seen each other for years since the night of their wedding. So the book opens up with them seeing each other again and not being able to recognize who the other person is. And their friends are like, what's wrong with you? How come you don't recognize your spouse? It's a great enemies to lovers rom-com. I would love if more people read it. And the other indie published romance is The Duke Who Didn't by Courtney Milan, which is also a fairly recent release. It was published in 2020. The main characters are childhood sweethearts, but then the hero decides to leave for three years with absolutely no communication between them, but now he's back and he really wants the heroine to marry him. They are very much opposites. The hero is very lighthearted, very flighty, whereas the heroine, she has plans for her life and she's very organized. It was a great lighthearted romance. I really, really like this one. And for the final square, the widowed heroine, and for my last two recommendations, I have The Madness of Lord Ian McKay. Kenzie by Jennifer Ashley. The heroine here is widowed and she's inherited a bunch of money so she decides to live her life to the fullest. She's traveling the world and doing everything she couldn't do while she was married or even before. It's also got a damaged hero Ian because of his autism. He was sent into an insane asylum by his father and he did not come out of that time well. He doesn't interact with anyone in society besides his family but then as soon as he meets Beth he sets his eyes on her and wants her to marry him. And the final book is another Bridgerton book. This is When He Was Wicked, book six in the series. This is Francesca's story 
story and this is what the step back looks like. She's a widow, she's been widowed for a couple years and she gets a forbidden romance with her late husband's cousin who has actually been in love with her since the moment that he met her at her wedding with his cousin. Those are all my recommendations for this round of historical romance readathon. I'm so excited for this readathon to start. I hope you guys will be joining us. If you are, let me know what you're planning to read. Don't forget I am hosting a live show on the last day of the readathon on the 21st and I'm also going to be interviewing Joanna Shoup on my Instagram. All three of us are interviewing a different historical romance author on our Instagrams and it's so so exciting. I hope you enjoyed all my rags. Links to them will be down in the description below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye!